Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now he's back. For over 50 years, Ken Loach has made films that rage against social injustice in the UK. From poverty, alcoholism and workers' rights, his work has forced us to breathe in the stench of the issues many would rather avoid. His seminal TV play, Cathy Come Home, ignited a national debate about poverty and homelessness and led to the creation of the charity Crisis. Loach retired in 2014, but started filmmaking again in response to the Conservative victory last year. His new movie, I, Daniel Blake, is the story of a carpenter told by his doctor he's too ill to work after a heart attack but then told by the benefits assessors he is fit and must find I'm employment going to have to ask you to explain leave. to you a situation and you don't care i've all got right. about 12 quid in my purse you know what you've created a scene all right jesus what am I christ to do? it also follows his friendship with a struggling of. young mother forced into desperate kids. measures to feed her children. They are grim portraits On indeed of life in austerity Britain. He could lose everything. But is this country as depressing well, a place as Loach can make it seem? Or is his work more polemical fiction? Well, Ken Loach joins me now, and with us also the Conservative MP Kwasi Kwarteng. Uh, Ken Loach, how typical an experience do you think um, the one you portray in the film is, of, of negotiating the benefit system? Uh, it's applying to hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and uh, if, if you uh, go around the country, you'll find the food banks in every city. Uh, you'll find people getting sanctioned all the time. I think it's short, it was a year, the year before last, a million sanctions. And that means people's lives are thrown in chaos. Um, we found story after story after story. We could have said this, said this film in any city. Uh, any corner of the, of the country. So I think this is very typical of what's happening. And do you make these films to try and change Britain? Um, no, you make the film to tell a story, to, to try and say, look, th this, is, this is happening, this is how we're living, this is... Uh, what, what do you think? If you see the film um, and you, you accept that's happening, then what are we going to do about it? But mainly it's just tell a story. And this one's a story of friendship. Uh, it's uh, Daniel, 59-year-old, uh, had a heart attack, but the state tells him he has to work. Um, and Katie, single mum, moved out of London, big, like many others, and in the social cleansing that's happening in London. Um, she's moved out to the north because it, the rents are cheaper, where she has no family, no support. And it's the friendship between them and how they survive and, and, and the choices they face, which are pretty harsh. Quasi I, Quarting, you? you're, you're probably at a disadvantage. I don't think you've seen the film, have you? I don't but, think many people have. But um, yes. it's just come out. But um, yeah. you've, you've heard the director's praise. Absolutely. Do you accept that there is a, a scale of suffering of people negotiating the benefit system that is truly shocking? I think there is some hardship. I mean, it would be wrong to suggest that there is no hardship. But as Ken said, he's telling a story. He's a creative person. And as you said, I mean, Ken has been working for 50 years as a social commentator, as a, one of our great directors, I have huge respect for his work. But it is creative. I don't think it's an accurate... I mean, it's uh, not true, is that what you're well, saying? Well, I think elements of it are true. But as he said, he's telling a story. There's a place for social commentary. There's a place for, um, you know, from Dickens right through Ken's work to now. There's lots of uh, place for social commentary. But I don't think it's actually reflecting a broader reality, which is uh, the fact that the government is creating employment, I think the fact is that the economy is growing. Many people said it wasn't growing. And the government was actually re-elected last year. Now, I know Ken is a, effectively a, re a revolutionary socialist. I know that you were <laughs> involved in uh, Respect, which uh, is a political party that has advanced uh, left-wing views, and I respect that. But it doesn't really reflect the political reality that people experience. Um, it's conscious cruelty. This uh, system is imposed with conscious cruelty. We heard so many stories. A man uh, assessed for, goes, has had a heart attack, he's assessed for whether by the state, he has a heart attack in the course of the assessment and is then sanctioned because he doesn't complete it. A man takes his pregnant wife to hospital. Um, she's in premature labour. 
He misses his appointment, he's sanctioned, no money, life in chaos, new child. This is consciously cruel. And I'll tell you why we know it, because most people, if they can appeal against their assessment that they're fit for work when they're plainly ill, they will win the appeal. So the state is knowingly putting people through this. I, I don't and accept knowing, Well, it's, it's true. Just look at the figures. I people don't know are winning about it. The, actual, the individual anecdotes. I, I, don't, I can't comment no, on Well, that. I can tell you about the appeals. Yes. If people what I make an appeal, you. they will probably win. And, that, and the government knows this, and they're consciously putting pe sick, vulnerable people through quasi, that. Quasi. And you, your mm -hmm. government is responsible for it. What I can say, as a constituency MP, I, I deal with cases particularly, yeah. very much so in 2012, when the economy was, was, was slightly rockier than it is today. And there were, there were hardship cases. I hadn't heard anything of, it's conscious of, the, cruelty, of, the, of the type it's conscious you described. Cruelty. And can I tell you something else? Food banks. You are the party of food banks. You are the government of food banks. Do you know how many food parcels were handed out last year? 1,100,000. Do you know how many of those went to children? Over 400,000. Let, let, let it's that. the government of food banks, and you are consciously responsible for it. Ken is... Essentially, I mean, but this, we, we, hadn't, we had a general election all about this. Uh, um, no, this we was, never no, we did. We absolutely food did. That was one of the, the key messages mm. that Ed Miller Band uh, used. I think a lot of people on the left have, have uh, expressed mm. your concerns. Broadly, people feel that this government is working uh, better uh, than the alternatives. We're not perfect. Uh, I think the Prime Minister said we need a country that's working for everyone. Clearly, people are... <laughs> no, it's true. I think, I think she made a, a very good comment in that way. Uh, but there's yeah. no doubt that I think we're, we're actually making progress compared to let, where let we were. Let me just ask you, Ken, mm. briefly, I mean, when you made Cathy come home, you did mm. kind of change Britain. The charity came out of it, you shocked people. That, that's unlikely to happen with this film, isn't it, in the same way? Because Britain's moved on an awful lot and people know an awful lot more. Well, or, or is mm. it that, you know, the scale of suffering isn't as... Bad isn't as shocking. The scale of suffering is immense. Um, one million one hundred thousand food emergency food parcels. Over four hundred thousand children would not eat unless someone put an extra can into a collecting packet uh, packet at, at a supermarket. That's a deeply shocking, a shocking state of affairs. And you, you, there's 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 no way around that. The whole areas of the country that feel abandoned, that feel neglected, that feel no one speaks for. Got, them. We've got to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed for coming. Thank you. I've been